At the beginning of the episode, Kelly's friend, Diane, drops Zack at his house late at night. Since Kelly's phone is unreachable, Diane worries about her and hesitates to let Zack go inside the house. However, she sees a shadow pass by the window and considers it as Matt, and lets Zack leave. When Zack enters the house, he finds it messed up and trashed. As he looks around for Kelly and Matt, he runs into Matt who is already a vampire now. Immediately, Matt attacks Zack but the latter dodges him and defends himself. Meanwhile, Ephraim arrives and stabs Matt with a silver dagger and kills him. Seeing his father, Zack feels safe and informs him that Kelly has been missing. After Satrakian warns Ephraim about Kelly coming after Zack if she has turned into a vampire, Ephraim asks Zack to go with Satrakian to his place. While Zack leaves with Satrakian, Dutch, Vasily, Ephraim and Nora stay back at Kelly's house to dispose of Matt's body. Later, Dutch goes to her apartment with Vasily and finds out that her roommate, Nikki, has stolen all her money and her laptop. In the meantime, one of Dutch's friends, Ronnie, who has turned into a vampire, emerges from the dark and attacks her. Right on time, Vasily slays Ronnie and leaves the apartment with Dutch. Back in the truck, Satrakian comforts Zack who is crying over Matt's death and his missing mother. Satrakian tells Zack about Matt being a vampire and asks the little boy to mourn and move on. As soon as Dutch and Vasily get in the truck, they drive to Satrakian's shop to rejoin Nora's mother and head downstairs to his basement. In order to track down the master and destroy him, Satrakian proposes an alliance with Vasily to use his intimate knowledge of the city. At Kelly's house, Ephraim and Nora wrap Matt's body in plastic and burn it. Later, when they are inside the house, they mourn for Jim as they comfort each other. The closeness leads to romantic attraction and they end up in bed together. Meanwhile, Diane busts in looking for Kelly and finds a half-naked Nora and Ephraim in the bedroom. Although Diane yells at him, Ephraim asks her to get out of town and inform him if Kelly calls her. Moreover, Ephraim assures Diane that he loves Kelly as she is the mother of his son, which Nora isn't pleased to hear. In the flashback of Poland 1944, Satrakian goes back to the place where he made the coffin and grabs the silver knife he had hidden earlier taping it to his ankle. Meanwhile, Eichhorst arrives and thinks Satrakian is unhappy after finishing his masterpiece. Later that night in the barrack, the master runs through the bunks and kills many men. Although Satrakian tries to attack the master with the silver knife, the master overpowers him and breaks his fingers, while taunting him that even God cannot save him. Back in the present at Satrakian's place, Dutch confesses that Eldritch Palmer hired her to shut the internet down. Additionally, she mentions Eichhorst as a plastic-faced German, who works with Palmer. Hearing all this, Satrakian asks if she can undo what she's done to which Dutch replies that she can if she gets her way back to Palmer's place. In the following scene, Gus and Felix along with a few other prisoners, are taken to the doctor in a van. Felix, who is infected, transforms into a vampire and starts attacking his cellmates and the driver. Consequently, the van crashes. The remaining guard opens the door to the back of the van, but Felix quickly latches onto him. Taking the opportunity, Gus grabs the dead guard's keys and gun, and shoots Felix. Before escaping, he passes the key to the remaining prisoners. Back in the flashback, Satrakian wakes up with broken fingers the next day, and gets his fellow prisoner to straighten them. Eichhorst separates the prisoners into two groups in order to execute the wounded ones, since they are no longer useful for any work. He sees Satrakian's fingers and sends him with the group lining up for execution. Just as Satrakian kneels, waiting to be killed, he hears gunshots coming from the woods and sees allied forces flying overhead. He escapes with his fellow prisoners, who help him climb the barbed wire fence and into the woods. In the present, Ephraim and Nora return to Satrakian's place, where Zack asks if they burned Matt's body and found Kelly. As Ephraim cuddles with his son on the couch, he promises to look for Kelly in the morning. Back in Poland 1944, Eichhorst makes his own escape through the snowy landscape. He goes inside a metal storm cellar door in the woods to meet the master. In return for his loyalty and service to the master, Eichhorst pleads with him to turn him into a vampire and make him immortal. Soon, the master removes his hood and reveals himself. He uses his long claw to slice open Eichhorst's arm and then releases a worm that enters Eichhorst's body making him a monster. In the present, the next morning after Kelly went missing, Zack picks a laptop from Satrakian's pawn shop and uses it to locate Kelly's phone. When he finds Kelly's phone is active and on the move, he becomes hopeful to find his mother. After Ephraim learns about this, he heads out to the phone's location. Soon, Ephraim locates Kelly's phone with a homeless woman with a burn on her leg. In exchange for wrapping her wound, she takes Ephraim to Kelly's car where she finds the phone. Inside the car, Ephraim finds a tissue covered in blood, suspecting Kelly might have been attacked. In the next scene, we are taken back to Kelly's house, 
32 hours earlier, where vampire Matt attacks Kelly in the kitchen. She defends herself with a blender blade to slice his cheek open. Meanwhile, a worm from Matt's face digs its way into her eyeball. However, Kelly makes it out the front door and then to her car while Matt is trapped inside the house by the daylight. After a few hours, Kelly transforms into a vampire when she wakes up inside her car. With worms crawling all over her body, Kelly begins to develop the blood-sucking tentacle inside her throat. She suffers in pain and wipes off the blood in her face with a tissue. At dusk, she gets out of the car and drops her phone. Then, she stumbles down the street, desperately searching for Zack. Although Kelly initially heads to Zack's school, she stumbles outside in the dark after she finds the school is empty, and that Diane has already picked up Zack. Outside, when Kelly sees the vampires feeding on people, she starts to feel the pull for blood herself. In a scene of 17 hours earlier, Kelly heads over to Diane's house, where she attacks Diane's little son, lashing out at him with her tentacle and killing him. When Diane jumps in to stop, Kelly turns on Diane and drains her completely dry. After killing the mother and son, Kelly follows the voice in her head and heads into the subway tunnels and meets the master, who asks Kelly to embrace her glorious fate. Elsewhere, Vasily and Dutch enter Eldritch Palmer's office in order to reverse the damage that had been done to the internet. However, they are summoned by Palmer's security and are held hostage. Fitzwilliam takes Dutch to Palmer, leaving behind Vasily with other guards. As Dutch demeans Palmer for being irrational and evil, Palmer taunts her as worthless. Enraged, Dutch punches Palmer in his face. As a result, Palmer orders Fitzwilliam to kill Dutch as well as Vasily. Although, Dutch and Vasily expect Fitzwilliam and his men to shoot them. Fitzwilliam unexpectedly lets them go because he is not in favor of what Palmer is doing. In the following scene, Ephraim arrives at Diane's house searching for Kelly. When he sees the shattered photo frame and signs of struggle in the room, he goes down to the basement and finds Diane and her son already turned into vampires. As the mother-son lash out their tentacles in an attempt to kill Ephraim, he shoots both of them with a heavy heart. Afterwards, Ephraim finds Kelly's locket in Diane's hand, making him assume that Kelly is already a vampire. Later, when Ephraim returns to Satrakian's place, he hands over Kelly's phone to Zack and asks his son to not lose hope. Scrolling through his mother's phone, Zack comes across several photos with Kelly and a video that shows him receiving a new bike from Kelly on his birthday. Sitting alone, Zack cries over his mom. The next day, inside Satrakian's basement, Vasily prepares a UV light bomb to fight against the vampires and says they have to give a shot with it and hope for the best. Meanwhile, Nora's mother gets frantic about being unable to find her old ashtray. In order to calm her, Satrakian gives her one of his ashtrays. In the following scene, Gus goes back to his apartment after escaping from the van. He reaches his apartment to find his brother and mother turned into a vampire. He breaks down seeing his mother hiding in a closet to avoid sunlight. However, when his vampire brother attacks him, Gus kills him and leaves the apartment. Later, when he hears noises in the hallway, he grabs the fire axe. He sees his vampire landlord, confronts him and beheads him. Elsewhere, Ephraim, Nora, Satrakian and Vasily go on a mission to hunt the master, leaving behind Zack with Nora's delusional mother in the pawn shop. After a few hours, Nora's mother goes crazy when she goes out of cigarettes and yells at the front gate, begging for someone to let her out. In order to calm her down, Zack decides to go out and get cigarettes for her. Reluctantly, Zack makes his way into the chaotic street and goes into a deserted convenience store where he sees the clerk lying behind the counter. As he is about to grab the cigarettes near the clerk's body, a young looting couple arrives in the store. Immediately, Zack runs and hides downstairs in a basement storeroom. There, he sees a vampire lurking in the shadows and climbs back to the main floor, but bumps into the looters. While the looters grab Zack, the vampire comes out of the basement and attacks the looters. Immediately, Zack flees from the scene and he runs into Gus before making it to the store door. While Gus goes after the vampires, he asks Zack to run. On his way out, Zack grabs the cigarettes and reaches to the pawn shop safely. In the next scene, we see Ephraim, Nora, Satrakian and Vasily walking down into the subway to find the master. In the tunnels, they come across a pile of nesting vampires. In order to avoid alerting the master about their arrival, Satrakian suggests leaving the nesting vampires. Therefore, they delicately walk and go past the vampires until F sees a woman he thinks is Kelly. He goes to look, but is relieved to find it's not her. A little further into the tunnels, they encounter a vampire, but Satrakian warns them not to kill it yet. When the vampire steps on the third rail, it burns, which makes Ephraim and his associates realize another way to kill the vampires. Later in the tunnel, 
They find a narrow passage, where Ephraim crawls in first followed by Satrakian. Meanwhile, Ephraim is distracted after hearing Kelly's voice calling for help and follows it. Eventhor Satrakian warns Ephraim that it is a trap. Ephraim still wanders off towards the sound. On the other side, Vasile and Nora confront the approaching vampires and kill them with the UV lights. After this, they make their way into the passage. In the following scene, Ephraim reaches a cave following Kelly's voice and comes across the master's coffin. He immediately opens it but finds nothing. Soon, he sees a swarm of vampires approaching towards him. In a blink, the master flies down from the ceiling and grabs Ephraim by the neck and strangles him. The master says Ephraim has failed just like his mentor, Satrakian. Furthermore, the master claims to take everything from Ephraim including his wife and son. As the master is about to suck Ephraim with his tentacle, Satrakian arrives. He tries to attack the master, but just then, Vasily tosses the UV light bomb towards the master, sending him off into the tunnels and killing his minions. Back in the cave, pissed off for being unable to kill the master, Satrakian takes out his anger on the master's coffin, destroying his own creation with a sledgehammer. Later, as they walk through the tunnel in search of the master, they instead come across hundreds of nesting vampires in transition. Despite knowing the risk, Satrakian insists on going inside the tunnel, but Ephraim and Vasily drag him away, trying to prevent Satrakian from a death mission. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel grow. Don't forget to watch part 4. Thanks for watching.